Yes. So there were a lot of such inventions which have shaped the way the world has evolved by women inventors. But then she found that even in US, uh, women were deferential. They gave credit to men many times for their inventions. They gave the name of their husbands. So there was no distinction as far as complexity. Ability to process complex information is concerned. There, is no, there was no dis disadvantage that women had. But they didn't have access, as much access to the tools, to the laboratories, to the workshops, to the peer group. That was the reason that they couldn't demonstrate their approval advantage that they could have. Not because they didn't have the capability to think. So what I'm trying to say is that when somebody is not able to understand a phenomena, it need not be because the person cannot process the information. But if person has not been given the tools to process the information, then person feels handicapped. And therefore, is not able to do justice to that. Yes. Can this uh, relate to the concept of the property or the tool of knowing what property is or owning property? I mean, in many societies, women have been denied the right to vote as well as own property or hold loans or anything in their name. Patents is just another form of property. Is this? Well, in India, till 1985, and I wrote a report on that uh, when I was working on credit policy. A woman borrower wouldn't get a loan without husband's signature. A husband would get a loan without woman's wife's signature. Even if it is a clean loan, that means if there is no issue of property. So, and this was corrected only about 12, 15 years ago. That recommendation which we had made way back in 85, uh, Deputy Governor Reserve Bank Ramakrishnaya was in the chair was accepted much later, 20 years later. But what I'm trying to say is that for such a long time, they did not even have a circular, so that even on the statutes there was no rule by which we could say that women are not required to give obligant, a guarantee of their husband. It was understood. So yes, you're right that there are structural, but I'm not getting into that at just now because I want to remain at the more abstract level. In the abstract sense, the the fact remains that tools which they evolved and tools which they got access to and tool making tools, blacksmithy, carpentry is a tool making process. If you don't have access to tool making process, then how do you create tools? Even if you know that there is a problem in the technology. So there is a need for us to now we will have a, before I, we have a break for five, seven minutes, we will, I would like us to reflect that this volition that got built, volition means choice, ability to exercise choice. And we will see that this is one of the most important factor in the evolution of societies. If you constrain the choices structurally through institutions, through arrangements, through rules, then no matter how smart the mind is, no matter how capable the brain is, you can only process information which is being allowed to be filtered to you, to the information that you can access within that boundary that has been drawn. So that Lakshman Rekha, you know, in our scriptures there is a story of how Ram drew a boundary which Sita would not cross, lest she falls prey to demons. But it's a, it's a metaphor, very powerful metaphor, where the ruling class or the protectorate or whosoever it is has drawn boundaries, you will not cross this line. You will not cross this line. This is the line. This is where you should be. Such lines we don't find for men in the scriptures, in the consciousness. We don't find such lines. So there is a there is something to be said about the boundaries that have been drawn. But not going further on that issue, our interest now is that, given the fact that okay, we can make some tools, what kind of tools and technologies evolved? in societies where languages evolved much faster and much more in a mature manner 
compared to societies where language did not evolve much. So if you look at number of words in different languages, why do some languages, some communities evolve more words for the same phenomena and why do other communities evolve less words for the same phenomena. So we will now look at, we will go from volition Why do we need choice? Because there is a lot of variability. Any phenomena has inherent variability. There is nothing constant. And when there is a variability, you have to use some order and ordering principle to reduce the variability. So you divide that into different classes, different categories. There are, the, there are a whole range of statistics which has evolved to manage variability in a phenomena. But the fundamental is that if there is a variability in a phenomena, you need to be able to see whether it is systematic or random. The first choice that you have to make, whether variability is random or systematic. So whether residual errors are distributed, how they are distributed in an equation. How did societies evolve ways of reducing variability? We will look at that after tea break.